Now, we have talked before on Korea 24 how there's more to the culture of Korean alcohol than those ubiquitous green bottles of soju. There is a whole world of Korean spirits, wine and drinks out there. And today on Touch Base in Seoul, we have another guest who has fallen for that world, so much so that she started her own business dedicated to the education of Korean traditional alcohol, or sul, and it's called the Sul Company. I'm delighted to say that Ms. Julia Mella has joined us in the studio today to tell us about that and her Sul journey. <laughs> Ms. Mella, thank you for being here with us today. An absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Can you tell us first a little bit about yourself? How long have you been in Korea and what first brought you to Korea? Uh, well, these days I try and stop counting because it means how old I'm getting. <laughs> uh, but I have been in Korea for about 15 years now. Uh, I actually came, as many people did, was, which was to teach English and to have a new experience after graduating university. Right. Uh, and I taught a couple of years and I actually got into radio for a while and did a couple of things in Korea, which I loved. But about 10 years ago, I discovered quality Korean alcohol, quality makgeolli, I guess you would say. Um, and I pretty much fell in love with it. I'd had soju before, I'd had makgeolli before, but I'd always thought, okay, this is a means to an end uh, in a lot of ways. Um, but then when I tried all this quality stuff, I was like, oh my goodness, this is actually really, really good. Why is there no information about it? Uh, and that was sort of the, the raindrop that started the waterfall of, uh, of my journey into being a specialist in, in the field. So before that time, about 10 years ago, you had had Korean alcohol, for example, soju, as you talked about, and other mm -hmm. types of makgeolli. But then what was that discovery of the better so how was that experience like that was really eye opening to me because mm. i and like many people that come to korea for the first time they think that soju and makgeolli are just a brand almost. They're almost synonymous with the green bottle or with what you can get in a convenience store. I had no idea that there was variety, there was different ABVs, there were different flavors and things like that. So I actually had a, uh, a blind tasting which was uh, put on by the academy that I now teach at. Right. And uh, and it was just a complete different window. And I had asked the, the professor that was giving the tasting at the time, why is there no information about this? Why is there not more? I would have made better drinking choices if I'd, <laughs> if I'd known about that. Um, and he just sort of looked at me and said, well, if you're not busy, I mean, why don't you do it? <laughs> and that was the seed and here I am. Okay, that was the seed. How did you develop that seed then? Where did you go next with that? So I did start off as a drinker. Uh, I think that's usually the entry level. Uh, I was definitely into discovering more about them and just trying different types. So this is when we started a community, a mm. meetup community, which was called, originally it was actually called Makale Mamas and Pajon Papas. Uh, but we dropped the Pajon for some reason. We thought that was too long. Um, <laughs> but then we basically opened up this community community. So every three weeks, we would say anyone in Seoul, if you want to come and join us, we pick the place, come and arrive. And we would order all the makgeollis on the menu. And we had rating sheets and we'd all write down what we thought. And at the end of the evening, I would collect them and then uh, make a average review of everyone, what everyone thought about it and put it on the website. So it was a learning experience, but also a social experience. Um, and then I found pretty much a year or two in that I wasn't learning with everybody. I was actually teaching everybody. <laughs> Right, um, and that was that was definitely a defining cha defining change. Right, so the Makali Mamas and Papas is pretty much where you started. But as you said, that was a social community rather than a company as such. Yes. So then let's get into the company did form in the end, the Sul Company. How did those experiences before lead you to establish a company dedicated to Korean alcohol? Right. Well, I mean, I, I will say it wasn't easy to change from community of offering free services and uh, and just being social to change into a commercial entity. But it was a natural progression because uh, actually I'm a I'm a specialist in Seoul, but I'm also a teacher of fermentation. So uh, in order to prepare for that, I've always been keenly aware that I'm not Korean. Right. Um, and then I essentially am the first person to be disseminating this information in English. So I have to be not just right. I have to be really, really right. Um, so you have that responsibility. <laughs> feel it's it's a heavy shoulder burden i mean i don't I'm, i triple check everything every time i'm i'm uh, giving any information out um so i spent a good five years during that time of not just mmpk but uh also studying so i learned korean i studied at all the different schools for fermentation um and really crossed my t's and dotted my eyes about what i wanted to to learn and then it became a jump into okay we need to rebrand we're not we're not just makgeolli anymore as well we were mm. doing soju and chongju and kwashiju and all these things 
Um, and it was a very conscious move to move to this little company because also we need to have a word that describes Korean alcohol. Mm. Uh, we can't keep saying Korean traditional alcohol all the time. Uh, we just say beer, we just say wine, and essentially, actually, we just say sake. Uh, and actually, an interesting story, the word sake does not mean Japanese traditional alcohol. Mm. It means alcohol in Japanese language. So in the same way that su means alcohol in Korean language, it actually comes from two characters, su meaning water and pu meaning fire. And thousands of years ago, when the ancestors brewed, it would bubble and create CO2. So they <laughs> thought that it had unlocked fire water. So it has these rich, the word su, even now it means beer, wine, whiskey, whatever. Mm. Uh, it actually originated from makuli, from brewing with rice. So we made a conscious decision to move away from the community and to rebrand and say, now we offer services, but also let's start calling Korean alcohol sul in English, because five years, 10 years, 100 years from now, we don't want to be saying Korean traditional alcohol. We want to be saying sul, which is makli, soju, chongju, all those beautiful things. Right. It definitely sounds like you've done your homework, laid the groundwork and really thought about this issue. Mm -hmm. I think that's so fascinating that the fact that we call Japanese sake sake, but we don't have a word as such until we think about it. We can, why not call it suru? Exactly. It was a logical progression, but also, as you know, uh, makali doesn't spell very well in English uh, <laughs> and it really gets mispronounced everywhere. Um, so actually, sul is one of the easier ones to, to spell and it's very adaptable. So we're hoping that it catches on as well as we hope it'll catch on. So, You mentioned that you offer services with the company. What kind mm -hmm. of services do you offer? Well, pre-corona, which is a buzzword of, of the times these days, uh, we were very heavily into tourism. Um, so we would offer tasting tours and brewery tours and events and things like that um, and really connect the experiential part because during my time of um, you know, studying, I'm very close with a lot of artisan breweries uh, and my, my passion really at the end of the day is I want the Korean alcohol industry to grow and I want to help the artisans reach a market that perhaps they would have no access to. So it's all about craft for me. Um, so we did a lot of that uh, and classes, brewing classes. But now uh, mostly what I focus on is consulting. Um, well, I actually help people open Muckley Breweries internationally. Uh, because as you might know, Muckley is uh, unpasteurized. So mm. it is unshippable. It is not possible to export good quality Muckley. So I really believe the future of the expansion is in breweries in other countries that are locally produced, but also uh, adhere to certain practices and traditions and things like that. So it's very a conscious shift now into helping other people um, produce their own. For the uninitiated into Korean alcohol, how would you describe it? What makes it beautiful in your eyes? There's a there's <laughs> how much time we got. Uh, <laughs> there's so many things that I that I really do love about it, um, but I think it's really in its in, it's in simplicity. Um, the three ingredients to make makli are rice water and nuruk, which is the fermentation starter for making this alcohol. It's unique mm. to all of the other Asian alcohols that also use rice. But it's wild and it's expressive, and you can make multiple categories out of the same drink. So if you've got those three ingredients, you don't really have to be a scientist. You don't have to be really careful in the same way you do with beer and with wine. You can actually make it in your own home in the same way that it's uh, a very home holistic way. One of my favorite stories about Sora is that it was considered more like cooking. Mm. Uh, in the same way that every woman in the household, every matriarch, would provide the gochujang, the tenjang, the, the kimchi, she would also have su as part of her repertoire in the category. So it's very forgiving in that way in terms of production, but it's got so much heart and soul into the production and also your expression. You can do so many things with it. Um, so every day it's a new day in terms of possibility with su. During the corona times, we've seen this explosion of people who are doing uh, things in their own home, like making sour bread. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing why not make makali as a next trend? It's a no-brainer no for me. And actually, that's what I, that was my first pivot last year. I mean, it was a rough time. No tourism, no tourists, mm. um, you know, but what are you going to do? It's not like I'm ever going to give up on this. So uh, it's a lifestyle choice. So <laughs> uh, it, that was my first foray, actually, into online classes. And I am still developing more and more additions to the courses because they've been very popular and people are now looking. It's not just something to do in your house. There is a big shift in the world in terms of knowing what you put in your body. 
Mm. Uh, and fermentation is a huge industry. Uh, people want better gut health. They want to be uh, seeing something grow from beginning to end. And Makali fits perfectly into that. Anyone can be a brewer. Anyone can. You don't need a lot of skill. You need a lot of skill to be really good. Um, but anyone can try uh, making good soil. Do you think attitudes towards Korean alcohol has changed over the years? Even within Korea, I feel mm-hmm. like people are getting more interested in not just uh, those green bottles, but uh, more as well. They're looking for more. It's a total shift. It's a total, total shift. Uh, I've been doing this for 10 years. When I started there, I could count on one hand how many craft breweries were out there commercially. Uh, in the last couple of years, in the last three years, we've seen upwards of 50 or 60 new breweries open every year. And what is the huge shift is that they're younger. There's less of that older family passed down tradition and young people wanting to become brewers, but also to put their stamp on a traditional Korean product. Um, And so that is transferring to the drinking culture because there's different branding, there's different bars, there's all the part of an industry is there's the message to the customer. So a way to uh, drink and eat and experience. And then also the producers want to be connected with their customers. So it is a totally different world. I even find it hard to keep up when before it was super easy, but I am trolling the internet every day to try and keep up. Um, So it's great. It's been so fascinating to learn about your passion for Korean alcohol, and I think you're a fantastic spokesperson for it as well. (laughs) Finally, though, what's next for you and the company? Well, I mean, uh, we're watching and waiting on the numbers uh, because COVID really has hindered us quite a little bit. Mm. Uh, But I really am focusing more on the online space. So I will be releasing uh, a new masterclass course in our online courses and also how to make nuruk because one of the biggest challenges in Korean alcohol is you need nuruk and that's not exactly something you pop into, you know, your local grocery store in America to get. Um, so you can actually make that yourself. So I'm focusing on the online courses and I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty busy with my portfolio of consulting clients. So uh, <laughs> continuing to provide the best services there. Well, I hope our listeners do get to enjoy your masterclass videos and they try making makali themselves at home. We've been speaking to Julia Meller from the Sul Company. Thank you once again for your time today. A pleasure. Thank you very much.